This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S-1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. Part 19. Will Ison hit Earth? Yes, no, and maybe. Yes, it's true. Just like roses are red and skies are blue, parts and pieces of Ison are coming to Earth to say hello to me and you. Hope, hope. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special treat in this one. This untrained eye is excited about the things I see in some of the Hubble Hangout data that we got from NASA and some scientists. It's even cooler than the motion picture photographs we got when we get a look at some of their different films filters and different looks at this thing we're gonna get to see over this episode i'm gonna be showing you the, the flying v data as we we shall see where it looks like it, it's a big flying v now they say it's all artifacts and indiana jones hallucinations but it looks pretty cool man you know looks like it's got a nice shape that's what she said about my butt <laughs> see what i did there shall we say all right so now let's get to the hitting it well right now it's estimated that the majority of the debris will be micron size and maybe a bit of the larger stuff will make it to earth to us to see in a meteor shower i know that several people have noted that earth will be passing through Ison's exact debris tail around January 13th to the 15th, I do believe. And that dust and debris uh, will definitely hit us. So yes, Ison will hit us. The dust, maybe some of the bigger stuff. But no, Ison, not the nucleus, will hit us. So stand down, hard on, full speed ahead, doomers. The meter on this is actually closer to dud than doom at this point. I would think if there is any doom, it would all be in the wormwood, in the dust, like the chemical makeup of it. Like if it has a shitload of cyanide, ah, uh, that, that could be negative, I would think. I'm not a chemical organist engineer type guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, so even the whole wormwood cyanide is pure speculation. Though at this point, NASA does want to get a better look at it because they don't know what it's made up of either, man. They say water, but what type of water? Is it magic water? Is it cyanide water? Is it holy water? We will find out. Only time will tell. Because right now, Ison is still sight unseen behind the sun, out of sight until the end of August at best, September to Earth-based telescopes, and then maybe October or November for human eyeballs to lay their sights upon it. And yeah, of course, this only adds to the drama, heightens the suspense, and boosts Ison's ability to make a very dramatic return. Hey, Castor and Pollux, in the ship? Wait. Wasn't Nostradamus saying Ison was in a ship? Clearly, he was wrong, because Ison is not in a ship. It is just a comet. The photos do not show a crow's nest, a sail, or oars that could power intergalactic travel. Clearly, Nostradamus was wrong in this. Ison's not coming in a ship, but Ison is coming from Castor and Pollux. Well, and, you know, will it hit us? No, the main nucleus is not going to hit us. But I was listening to a Google Hangout. It's where everybody gets on the Google and then they hang out in the Google. Um, just don't hang out with Google and my Google. That would be bad. And so, A, one thing they noted is one of the science guys said they didn't know how big it was, which was interesting. But he did say that he thought the largest it could be was like three kilometers. And he thought it was much smaller than people noted, which I thought was interesting. But he didn't know. At the end, he said he didn't know what the size was. So we're still waiting on that size. Another thing that blew my mind from the Google Hanging app was they were showing the raw data from the Hubble. Now, he said that the raw data shows a bunch of stuff which makes the woo-woo people go, woo-woo. And he's right. When you look at Ison, it's got those two wings. Like, you know, famed celestial objects here supposedly have where it's like the winged planet winged star winged comet you know it's got the flying v off of it which looks pretty cool but he said those were just cosmic rays that they had to clean out so i i, I thought i would just at least note and tell you what he said another buddy of mine a friend named astro mutt you know he explained to me that blew my mind he said every major telescope we have is black and white i was like no way get out of town he's like no it's true I'm like no way get out of the city he's like no it's true every telescope is black and white so when you see these beautiful Hubble photographs that's them putting false color filters on it um so that we can get a better idea of the different amounts of debris and matter because black and white is pretty two-dimensional uh or 2D or flat, shall we say. Or digital. Crap. I don't know what to say here, so I'm probably going to sound dumb. Another thing. Man, it's damn hard to get Amy Mainzer to tweet me back. You know, like, almost impossible. Uh, I I'd send her food, but if she, she she thinks I'm weird, people don't usually eat food they receive from weird people. Uh, so that would be a waste of good food. So I'm an excellent cook. Okay, then. So yeah, Ison, the nucleus, will not hit Earth. Ison, the debris and micron dust, will hit Earth. If Ison breaks up like a, as it goes around the sun and shoots 
shoots out like a shotgun shot. Well, then all bets are off. Some of the bigger pieces might hit. Nothing too damaging, I wouldn't think, but nobody really knows. That's the beauty of astronomy. Nobody really knows. But I will say again, this is not a very doomy event right now. I would give our doom ratio maybe 2 to 5 to 10% at max. So, um, another thing, the Hubble makes videos, did you know that? Yeah. He's not as funny as I am, though. He's got a better voice. Uh, and so the Hubble just made a video saying, Will Asin hit Earth, which I thought was interesting. So, uh, and then the Hubble said, No, it won't hit Earth, but it'll, Earth will hit ice and the dust anyway. So, but this mainly came from a paper that supposedly got leaked from an observatory in Lisbon that said ice and will hit Earth, uh, that when it comes around, all of the debris and its reaction to the tidal waves, radiation tidal waves or whatever, will push it towards Earth like a coronal mass ejection. Which might be right, but, you know, little particle stuff really won't hurt us. It's the bigger stuff that we would have to, you know, watch out for. So, but who knows? Either way, man. So, the Hubble came out of the video and was like, no, Ison will not hit Earth, but Earth will hit Ison, and but not in a harmful way. And then they had a Google Hangout that was like, no, Ison will not hit Earth, but Earth will hit Ison, but in a non-harmful way. And then I had this video saying, yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, great. So in conclusion for my pseudo astronomy thesis statement, it's a matter of is Ison looking at Earth going, I'd hit that, or is Earth looking at Ison going, I'd hit that. The assertion is that Ison's debris field will act like a coronal mass ejection, and the two tails doubled will strike Earth. Now, now, even microns can cause a meteor appearance, which would be kind of cool to see a million little microns light up the night sky like harmless blankets of fire in the heavens. Or I guess you could wildly speculate that Ison is breaking up as we speak, and if its core cracks and splits, it will create a shotgun effect and scatter gun. The inner solar system with the parts of the nucleus and the debris would be every which way and loose. So overall, I still think the doom level is still pretty low from all the data we know anyways. When we find out, it, depending on what we find out what it's composed of, uh, if it's cyanide, all bets are off. And another note, which we will cover in Ison part 20 is space water. Uh, there are a lot of theories that say meteor dust causes water or that comets add water to the earth, which is interesting. So we have been getting an uptick in meteor dust lately for sure. So if Ison was doomy, if you need your doom man, maybe all that dust is going to turn into water. So once again, I will state that it's probably not smart to be living right on the coast of a major ocean at any time. Because no matter what, the weather has been acting weird. And if I had to choose between water levels rising or water levels dropping, I'm going to go with water levels rising every single time. So God bless everybody. And no, I still don't have a girlfriend shit i ain't even been on a date but i will add one thing that i guess i haven't stated before i'm very picky man uh very picky i mean superheroes can only date superhero women and for whatever reason the single superhero women out there there aren't many of them uh at least not that i've run across lately uh, at least the ones i ran across that were attracted to me so god bless everybody stay cool um let's keep watching this thing uh no matter what, I love her, Ison. Oh, and, and, why'd they put a dude as the voice of the Hubble, man? The voice of the Hubble should most definitely be a hot chick. I'm gonna write a letter to NASA, for sure. Um, a hot, smart chick needs to be the voice of the Hubble, because it kind of bothered me, and I don't know. I, I said I'd marry the Hubble, but I'm not gonna marry a dude. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but that that's just my own personal preference. Okay, great. Peace out. Stay cool. This comet is too comedy-licious for you, babe. Space underwear in your face!